want to thank the Lord for the opportunity we have this year for this Easter retreat. We thank God because we are celebrating the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we come this time to look at this all important message, I want you to give me undivided attention as the Lord has something to say to us, to remind us and to quicken us and challenge us concerning the expectations the church has for the second coming of the Lord. Shall we pray together? Our Father, we just thank you for this time. We bless and worship your name for the privilege to listen to you speak to us. Thank you, Father God, for all that you have been teaching us since we started this retreat. We know, Lord, you are perfecting us in order that we might be like you and to be qualified to be with you. We just pray that all we are going to hear and all that we have heard, Lord, will make us to be more like you and to be qualified to be with you in eternity in Jesus' name. We just pray, Lord, that you speak to us at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm talking to us this time on the subject, Saints' Watchfulness and Readiness for Christ's Coming. Saints' Watchfulness and Readiness for Christ's Coming. When we talk about Christ's coming, we know that Christ had been here before. We came as a child born in the manger. He came to reconcile the world unto himself and unto the Lord. But the second time that Christ will be coming, he will not be coming as a babe, and he was not, he's, coming, he's not coming as a reconciler, rather, he's coming as a judge and equally to establish the kingdom of righteousness here on earth. But then, how do we know that Christ is coming? Because Christ said it, prophets said it, and the apostles said it. Now come with me as we look at Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13 from verse 32. He says in verse 32, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels, which are in heaven, neither the Son, of, neither the son but the Father. Take ye heed, Watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. Verse 34, for the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at eve, or at midnight, or at the cock crow, or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly, he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Here we see the very words of the Lord Jesus Christ talking about his coming, his return. At this material time, he was on earth, and he knew that he was going to go to the cross. And that after the, uh, after, uh, before the cross, he was going to be crucified. And that after the cross, he will be buried. And then he will resurrect again the third day. And Christ was speaking ahead of time. And was telling his disciples and the church at large that I know I am going, my time on earth is limited. But I am going to come again. That is not, the, this is not going to be the end of my interaction with you. But I'm going to come again, but at that time, the time and the season that I'm going to come, nobody knows. Not even the angels, even the son does not know that. He is himself does not know. The timetable for my coming is with the Lord. Look at what he says in Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. As Luke re-emphasizes what Mark is telling us in Mark chapter 13. Luke chapter 21 from verse 27. He says in verse 27, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. I'm sure you know. When he talks about the Son of Man there, he's talking about G himself, Jesus Christ. He said, and, they, and then they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, 
Then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth near. The Lord was discussing with the disciples and the believers, and he was telling them the things that would precede his coming, that a lot of things will be happening before he comes. That one, there will be wars and rumors of war. There will be pestilences. Nations will rise against nations. Kingdom will rise against kingdom. A lot of things will be happening that the world will, will keep the world, the world will be perplexed with. But he said, when you see these things coming, know that the time of my coming back is drawing near. And he says, verse 28 again, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, look up, not look down, and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth near. Verse 29, and he spake to them a parable, behold, the fig tree and all the trees, when they, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now at, na at hand. So likewise ye. When ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is now at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation, what generation? The generation that, the, that will be witnessing these events. This generation, which generation? The generation that will be partakers of the perplexing event shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. You know, you know said in verse 33, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Christ was saying, what I'm telling you, understand. There are things that will definitely come to pass. Nothing can change them. Nothing can alter them. My words are, are words that are sanctioned in heaven. My words are words that will definitely come to pass. Kingdoms will come and go. My words will be constant. Kings will reign and go. My words will be constant. Seasons will come and go. My words will be constant. What I'm telling you about my second coming will not change. Nothing can alter it. It's a definite thing that is going to happen. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And take heed to yourself, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with sophithing and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that they come upon you unaware. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. You see what Christ was trying to say here is that with the passage of time, the tendency is there for mankind to become engrossed in the happenings around them, give marrying and giving in marriage celebrations, that it becomes so rampant that the tendency there for it to be cloud the thinking and the, the, the thinking of man and the focus of man on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you say, I'm warning you beforehand. Do not allow those things to make you to forget that I am coming again. I am coming again, and when I come, I'm going to take the church unto myself. Verse 35, for as, he shall, for as a snare shall he come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, and that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things. And that shall, that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. I pray that we will all stand before him when he comes in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ came the first time to reconcile mankind to God. He came the first time to be a prop the propitiation for sin and to be the bridge between the righteous, uh, righteous God and sinful mankind. However, as we observe and celebrate the first coming of the Lord and his resurrection, the church ought to be aware that the Lord had promised to come again. And they had promised to come again that we as, as, as a church, as believers, that we need to be aware, to be constant, to have it at the back of our mind all the time that Christ is coming again. And when he's coming, he's coming to take the church unto himself and he's coming as a judge of the earth. What then must we do? to make ourselves ready. That's why we're looking at the message. Saints watchfulness and readiness for Christ's coming. You observe that in the passages we are read, number one, it talks about the coming of the Lord, coming like a snare, coming like a snare, a thief in the night. And it talks about the uncertainty. That is, that is, when I say uncertainty, it means that no human being, not the angels, even the sun, cannot give the calendar, the specific date and time that is going to come. It's going that, that time is going to take the world 
unawares. Hence the need to be watchful, not only to be watchful, to be ready, to be ready for his coming when he comes. Three points quickly we are going to consider. Number one, the prediction of Christ's certain return. Number two, the preparedness for the church's confirmed rapture. Number three, the reminiscence and constant recommitment. Reminiscence and constant commitment. Point number one, the prediction of Christ's certain return. In Mark chapter 13, verse 24, where we read earlier, look at what Christ said. What Christ said there, he said, but in those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. Her light. Verse 25, and the stars of heaven, and the stars of heaven shall fall, fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken, and when, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. This was at the very words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He spoke to the disciples. He gave them an insight into the calendar of God, into the program of God. He said, when I'm going to come the second time, now I'm with you and I'm about to leave, but I'm going to come a second time. When I'm going to come a second time, these are the events that are going to precede my coming. The, the things will be happening in the world that they will the, the world will perplex, perplex with. He says a lot of natural calamities will be happening. Kingdoms will be fighting kingdoms. You know about, about our current uh, situation in the world, that there's a threat of a third world war. But these are the predictions that Jesus Christ said. These are the things that Jesus Christ said will be happening in the, pre the time it will be coming. He says, Christ said that definitely I'm going to come. He said, Jesus spoke about his return so many times in the scriptures that we cannot miss them. Look at it, Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, I want to read verse 64. Matthew 26, verse 64. He said, this had, he said And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Here Christ was towards the tail end of his earthly ministry. And it was before the adversary, he was to be judged and condemned. And he knew, and he had predicted it, that he was going to go to the cross. After the cross, he's going to be buried. And three days he will spend in the bowels of the earth. And after the, on the third day, he's going to resurrect again. He said, disciples, the story does not end there. Church, the story does not end there. That is the beginning of a new chapter. That will be the beginning of a new chapter. I am going to resurrect. He says, he, he said assuredly that death is a passage to the manifestation of the next calendar of God for the church. You see, Christ here was very sure. He said, Christ had been betrayed. He was, as, despite his betrayal, despite his judgment, despite his condemnation, he was sure of the upcoming crucifixion. Yet he spoke assuredly that he's coming again. Before he went to the cross, he spoke with confidence of his coming again. What other assurance do you need? This is Jesus Christ, the, the, the one who, the, whose every word will come to pass, whose every word was inspired of the Father. He said, I am coming again. I will believe, I, I choose to believe the testimony of Jesus over the testimony of any philosopher. I choose to believe the testimony of Jesus over the philosophy of any carnal, mortal man. If Jesus Christ said he's coming again, so it will be. He will surely come again. The prediction of Christ, sudden coming. We see Christ here affirming and confirming that he's going to come again. Whatever may be happening at that material time, he said, that does not cancel the fact that I am coming again. Look at Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13 again, I'll read from verse 24. This time, we're going to read up to verse 30. In this place, we see Christ spoke confidently of his coming and the events that will precede his coming. For those who believe the scriptures and the testimonies of Christ and the disciples, there is no doubt that Christ will come again. Matthew chapter 13, from verse 24, from verse 24, 2 to 30. But in those days... After that tribulation, 
The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give a light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels, and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the utmost part of heaven. Do you see there that Christ said he's coming? He's not going to leave the, 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 the saints here on earth. He's going to take them away from the great tribulation that, was, that is coming upon the world. Verse 28, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and put her forth, least ye know that summer is near. Say so ye in like manners, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh even at the door. Verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass till these things be done. Here we we'll see Christ again. It's true. Mark, the uh, Mark is saying also that giving an, a further, further insight into his second coming. Why is he coming? He said to take the disciples away. To take them so that they will not partake in the great tribulation. They will not partake in the great tribulation. That the coming of the Christ will be in two phases. One, it will come to, for the church at the rapture before the great tribulation. Number two, he will come, the, he will, the second coming will come to judge the earth and to establish the millennial reign. Look at John chapter 14. John chapter 14 from verse 1. John chapter 14 verse 1. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Disciples, I've told you some things that are going to happen. They could upset you. Things may be happening around that could upset you. He said, be rest assured. Be rest assured. God knows about you. God is thinking about you. God has a plan for you. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Whatever you may be going through. Whatever challenge you may be going through, whatever opposition you may be facing on this side of heaven, let not your heart be troubled. Why? Believe in God and believe also in me. What does it mean to believe in God and believe also in me? I told you I'm coming back again the second time. It may look as if I'm tarrying. You just believe in me. I said it. The prophet said it. It will surely come to pass because when you really look at the Old Testament, even before Christ came, they talked about the, his birth, his virgin birth. They talked about the circumstances of his birth and they spoke about even his second coming. And they all came to pass. If those prophecies came to pass and the words of Jesus Christ are coming to pass, surely the prophecy concerning his second coming, the revelation and the prediction of his second coming will come to pass. Verse 2 of John chapter 14 again. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. He's going to prepare a place for me. I don't know about you. He's going to prepare a place for me. He's going to prepare a place for all the blood-washed saints. He's going, to prepare, he's going to prepare a place for all those who believe in him and giving their life to him as their Savior. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, and that where I am, there you may be also. What an assurance, what an assurance to the body of believers. What an assurance to genuine believers. And if you are here today, you are not born again yet. You have not met the Lord. The Lord is not the Lord and personal Savior. You see, these things I'm reading to you, they are so sure and so true that you, the best thing you need to, you can do is to come to the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and to repent and submit to him. And you'll be among those whom Christ is preparing those beautiful mansions for in heaven. You see, many people tell you, some people tell you, they say, well, um, God is going to create a new, a new heaven and will not not all of us are going to go to heaven. Well, somebody came to me many years ago and he said, he came to me, he said, 
do you know what I As He wanted to preach to me. I said, no, I'm not interested in, in your preaching because I know where he's coming from. I knew, I knew what he believed. He said, but do you know what I want, to tell, I want to tell you? I said, I know what you want to tell me. He said, what do you want to tell me? What do I want to tell you? I said, you are going to tell me that when I go, I live here on earth, you are going to inherit my two-bedroom flat. Because I'm, my goal is not to end up here. Christ said, when I go, I'll come again and take you to myself so that you might be where I am. Christ is not on earth here. Christ is on the right hand of God in heaven. So that's where the believers are. Here we see Christ again saying, I will come again. I pray that you... will be ready when it comes in Jesus' name. I will be ready. We'll be ready when it comes in Jesus' name. Look at Acts chapter 1. The prediction of Christ started coming. We're seeing Jesus Christ said it. Here we saw also he reaffirming it a few times. Look at what he now says. The angel said in Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. I want to read verses 2, 3, and 9. Acts chapter 1 verse 2. He says, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Verse, verse, three, verse 3 now. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proof, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. A beginning of God. Verse 9, now verse 9, he says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10, And while they looked up steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them, a jelling being, in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken off from you, into heaven shall so come in like manner as she has seen him go into heaven. Do you see here? The, 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 here is the angelic proclamation and prediction, a revelation of Christ's second coming. Christ had, been, has, had resurrected, and Christ has shown himself in, in true infallible proofs to the disciples and had told them about his coming. He had told them that he was going to come again. Now he said, you stay there in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. What are you going to be doing with that power? One, be, be, get, be, be ready. Number two, you'll be preparing orders to, for my um, imminent return. And then this angel now told him, I, I think we need to really read that passage again and take note of the wordings of the angel. He says, and while they looked up, I stand now, step further towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up in heaven? This same Jesus. Jesus born of the Virgin Mary. Not Jesus born in a village, who later manifested himself and claimed to be Jesus. Jesus, this same Jesus, the smitten Jesus, the crucified Jesus, which is taken off from heaven, which is taken off from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you saw him ascend into heaven. You will see him descend from heaven. He's not going to be a Jesus that will just come out from a particular corner of the world and say, here I am, I am Jesus. He's not somebody, a prophet, that will come from a cave. After spending some time in the cave, he said, I am the promised Messiah. No. He said, this same Jesus, the one you see go, he will go, the way you see him go, that same way we will see him come back. Anything other than that is not of God, it's a fallacy. It's a fallacy. And so as believers, as Christians, we need to understand that the scriptures have affirmed it. Jesus Christ has said it. The angels are confirming it in this passage. We see the testimony of angels. We see the testimony of Jesus Christ. And look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. As you look at the testimony of inspired apostles. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. From verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 
from verse 13. Here in this passage, we are going to see the Spirit-inspired apostle talking about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 4, from verse 13. He says in verse 13, But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that he sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will, bring, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, not by the word of man, not by the wisdom of man, by the word of God, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend. There we are. There we are now. He said the Lord shall descend from where? For shall descend from heaven with a shout. Remember the angel? He said this same Jesus that you see going up in heaven shall come again. And Paul, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he said this same Jesus too, this time he will descend from heaven with a child and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise forth. Then we which are alive and remain. Who are the people who are alive and remain? Not remain as members of the church, remain written in the book of life. We which are alive and remain. Not just be members of deeper life, or be members of the denomination, but remain in the Lord, active in the Lord, remain in obedience, remain in holiness. He said, remain, shall be caught up, together with them in the cloud, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with his word. Paul the Apostle, through the inspiration of the Spirit, was talking about the first phase of the coming of the Lord, which the theologians call the rapture. That the church is going to be taken away from the world pre the tribulation. That we're not going to partake in the, 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 the sufferings of the world. In the last day, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the Lord of the righteous. So we see the testimony of the inspired. Apostle here, look at Revelation, the resurrected Jesus, Jesus. What has he got to say about his coming? Revelation chapter 1, Christ spoke about it while on earth. He equally spoke about it after his resurrection, after he had been translated and is now post-resurrection. Look at what he has to say in Revelation chapter 1, from verse 7 to 8. He said, behold, he cometh with the clouds. Wonderful. The consistency of the scriptures. He cometh with the cloud, and every eye shall see him. That is the second phase of the coming of the Lord. The first phase is the rapture. Not all eyes shall see him. The believers will hear the sound of the trumpet, and they will be taken up, the, the, taken up to meet him in the cloud, and we shall be with him for seven and a half years. But here he says, all eyes will see him. That is the second phase of his coming. When he's coming as a judge, when he will come to establish the millennial reign, the reign of righteousness, when he's going to reestablish the Edenic condition. He says, Behold, the Lord cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also with pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. The church say, Amen. Verse 8 now, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending, said the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the, all, the Almighty, the Almighty, the one that has all the power and authority. Though here we see Jesus Christ post-resurrection talking about his coming. Uh, look at chapter 16 of, Res of, of Revelation. Christ now is now speaking from glory. He's now speaking from a glorified state. He says in chapter 16 of Revelation verse 15, Look at what he says there in verse 15. He says, Behold, I come. Behold, I come. As a thief, blessed are he that watcheth and keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked, and they shall see his naked. I pray you keep your garment of righteousness. I pray you will not be found naked when Christ comes in Jesus' name. He said, Behold, he comes. He will come. That, that is the next plan, place of God for the church. Look at the concluding part of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 7. Chapter 22, verse 7. He said, Behold, I come quickly. Be blessed is he that keepeth the saying of the prophecy of this book. I pray you will not be found wanting when it comes in Jesus' name. There should be no doubt in our minds that Jesus is coming again. 
What will he come to do? Let me recap for you again. He will return for his people at the rapture. He's gone to prepare a place for us. This underscores why we should prepare ourselves for coming. That every one of us should prepare ourselves for coming. How do we prepare ourselves? How do we watch? How do we make ourselves ready as a church to confirm us for the rapture uh, that will take place? That brings us to point two, the preparedness for the church's confirmed rapture. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the preparedness for the church's confirmed rapture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I want to read verses 51 to 58. Verse 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this incorruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Must put on immortality. That, so when this incorruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O dead, where is thy sin? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of dead is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. We give it us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, this is where we are going to now. What should be the concept? What, what should be our reaction to the knowledge that Christ is coming to take the church? He said, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. If we are going to prepare for the coming of the Lord, there are two things we must do. Number one, you must be personally be prepared. You must be personally be prepared. What does it mean to be personally prepared? Number one, make sure you are born again. Number two, make sure you are living righteous before the Lord. And number three, make sure you are profitably engaged in the work of the master. Three things. One, you are born again. Two, you are righteous. Three, you are profitably engaged in the work of the master. Now, the second aspect of our preparedness, of our readiness, is we must make sure we prepare others. Did you hear that? We must make sure we prepare others. That is why we are making sure, maybe as pastors, as ministers, as members of the church, we have a ministry. We have a ministry towards others to make sure the knowledge you have, they have that knowledge. Not only that, the understanding of our preparedness, they have it. We prepare them for the rapture because the, church, the Lord is coming for a church without spot and without wrinkle. Because he's coming again to take us to where he's, he has prepared, then we must be steadfast and be prepared. You must be steadfast. Do not allow anything to make you to become disillusioned with the Christian journey. You may not have food to eat. Money may not be there to spend. People may misunderstand you. Brethren, whatever the things the world is throwing at you, whatever things the world is, tro is throwing at you, it cannot be compared to the gain that awaits you. What you must do, therefore, is this. Be focused on the Lord. Be focused on the coming Lord. And say, Lord, I'm not going to allow anything. I'm not going to be like Lord's wife. I'm not going to allow anything to deprive me of making heaven. He said, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Be steadfast in righteousness. Be steadfast in faithfulness. Be steadfast in following the Lord. Be steadfast. He said, unmovable. Don't allow the slate of men, the doctrines of the world, to move you. The new discoveries of the world. Well, now we can see that the Bible is not true. This is not true. No. The Bible is as true as it was yesterday, and it is today to be forever. The Bible is as true as God is true. Therefore, whatever the mortal man, fallen man, is throwing at the Bible, the Bible will outlive them. And God will help us to remain committed to this truth in Jesus. Name. Unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. What it means by abounding? Increasing. Making progress. 
You were doing this for God today, tomorrow you went to the, go to the next level. Don't stay static. Move on and do the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You see, look at Matthew chapter 24 where we read earlier. Matthew 24 from verse 42. You see, being ready is not automatic. We must prepare and pray so that we will not be caught on our ways. Matthew chapter 24 you see, some people tell you that once you are born again, that is all right. You are just being, you, are, you will make it. No, look at what Jesus Christ has to say here now. Look at what he said to disprove the fallacy or that, that, that doctrine. Matthew chapter 24, I want to read from verse 42. Verse 42 say, watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Do you notice what Jesus Christ is saying here? Because in my Bible, this was I read. It means that the words of Jesus. You see, if there's nothing that can cause you to be this way, Jesus Christ will not say what? Jesus Christ is the greatest economist of the world. He will not just use any word carelessly. He say, watch. Ye therefore, what therefore, for ye know not what your what hour your Lord doth come, doth know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief will come, he would have watched, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man coming. Jesus Christ said, Be ready. Jesus Christ said, Watch. You see, we can't afford in these last days to live the flippant Christian life. We can't afford to become unserious with our commitment to the Lord. We can't afford to become unserious with our commitment to righteousness and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, because the time ahead of us is shorter than the time we have already spent. And if I want to take everything away from the church, and you need to make up your mind, I am going to watch. I am going to prepare. I am going to be ready. You will be ready in Jesus' name. What are you going to, why are you, how are you going to be ready? And how are you going to prepare? Number one, read the word of God constantly. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You are, you are to, to prepare, part of preparedness is that you are studying the word. Because the word of that cleanses us. Number two, you, you are constant in prayers. Jesus Christ spake a parable unto them to this wise. That men ought always to pray. Pray without ceasing. Brethren, these are the time when believers are becoming lax at the place of prayer. And they, are, they, they can no longer pray. The, the, the desire to earn a living and to do this and to make a living is beginning to take prayer away from the church, from many believers. But if we are going to be prepared, if we are going to prepare for the confirmed rapture, number one, we must be constant in prayer. Number two, we must read our Bible word of God constantly. We must be constant in fellowship. Constant in fellowship. He said that we should not forsake the assemblies of ourselves together. So much more as soon as time approaching, we must continue. The Bible says that all those that believe in Acts chapter 2, they had or they know they continue steadfastly. You know, today you discover that many believers they lightly esteem the Bible study. Or they rightly esteem fellowship. They would rather be at the place of business than to be at Bible study. That's the spirit of the last day. That is the spirit of the last day coming. But this is the time for all to be more, to be closer to God. You must not miss, you must make sure that you are constant in fellowship. You are committed in service. You are committed in the service of the Lord. You, are, you make sure you do all that you ought to do. When I say committed, you are not doing the work of God as if you are doing anybody a favor. But you are doing it as something that you know that you are not, you are, you are a laborer unto the Lord. You are a laborer unto the Lord. And it's the Lord that will gauge the work you are doing for him. And number, another thing you must do is that you must be current in your separation. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the things of the world uh, the, the love of the Father is not in him. He said, brethren, let your moderation be known unto all men. Are there not believers today? They are no longer separate from the world. You see, if you are here today, at this retreat, you gave your life to the Lord. The mark of a true Christian is that the things you used to do, you do them no more. You separate yourself from the way of the world because the way of the world is not the way of the Lord. 
You see, if we are going to be prepared and we're going to watch for his coming, we're going to watch for his coming, one of the things we must do is that we must be separate from the world. We should be correct in our separation. You are separate in the way you do your marriage. You are separate in the way you do your business. You are separate in the way, in the way you go, you know, the, the, the relationship you keep. No, that's what I'm going to do. say next now. You are separate, you are separate in even the friends you keep. You don't love the world. You don't dress like the world. You don't dress to please the world. You dress to please God. You dress to please God. Complete. You, another thing you must do is you must be complete in grace. Walk in grace. Be constant in grace. Don't allow the grace, don't fall short of the grace of God. Every time you should plead the grace of God upon yourself and you should be constant in resisting temptation. Many people today can no longer resist and they say the Lord understands. Well, the Lord understands the one that is a sinner and the one that is not a sinner. God is unrighteous. God is no, it's of a purer eyes than to behold iniquity. You see, brothers and sisters, if truly, as we know, Christ will soon come, which I'm persuaded about, then we must resist temptation, subtle temptation. Of your temptation. Temptation when somebody is there and when somebody is not there. Temptation like the temptation that came to Joseph. We make up our mind. Why must I do this evil and sin against God even though man is not there? Temptation that comes to Dan, like Daniel that will make you to want to eat things offered to idol. You say, I must not do this. So that is what it means to resist temptation. When the, when the, so every one of us, the Lord will help us to Stand by his word in Jesus' name. You know the parable of the foolish virgin and the white virgin in Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, there were 10 virgins that were invited to a marriage. Five were wise, five were foolish. And the, five, the wise one took extra oil with their lap. Why the foolish one did not take extra oil with their lap? And behold, the Lord, the, 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 marriage, the bridegroom delayed in coming. And then eventually, the oil in the lamb became weed, ran dry, and they needed to replenish. The wise one found a reserve to replenish their lamb. The foolish one did not get a reserve. And they came to the wise, give us some of your oil. They said, no, we can't give unto you because if we give to you, it will not be enough. Brothers and sisters, men and brethren, the church is not only considered of believers. They are thirst, they are weak. They are foolish and they are wise. Where, which camp are you? Who are the wise? They are the wise that hear the word of God and say, this is the voice of the Lord. I am going to obey. I'm not going to lightly esteem the word from his mouth. I'm going to highly esteem it. I esteem his word more than my necessary meat. That is job for you. And the same vow, we need to put, put ourselves that this, this word, I'm going to esteem it, that when we always asking for grace upon grace every day, and when we get that grace, God will see us through in Jesus' name. When the foolish could, when they could have prepared, they did not do it. When they could have prayed, they did not pray. At the time, they could have spent more time in fellowship to re-energize to, to re themselves. They don't spend time in fellowship. The time came that was too late for them to do it. And when the bridegroom came, they were found wanting. They were not there. Brothers and sisters, watch over your life. Watch over your life. If you are going to be prepared for the church confirmed rapture, you must watch over your life. Watch over your life, watch over the things that have become important to you now. Is the kingdom of heaven still important to you as it was at the beginning when you first got born again? Watch over your character. Watch over your character. Well, what, do you speak the language of the world now? Do you speak over the language of the world? Watch over your language. Watch over your heart. What are the things you meditate the e on now? Do you meditate more on the images you see on social media? Do you meditate more on the things you see from the worldly musicians? He said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Watch over your heart. What, do you, what are you thinking on? Watch over your friendships. Church, watch over your friendship. Minister, watch over your friendships. See, you see, it, 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 no, the Bible says, an angry man will the one who had made up, who would dwell with the Lord, he will not go. Don't make sure that you don't go with people who can mislead. You say, evil communication corrupts good manner. Watch over your life. Watch over your character. Watch over your doctrine. Watch over your doctrine. 
the 22 cardinal doctrine that were emphasized in our ministry. Let's watch guard them jealously. This is not the time to begin to say, well, it doesn't matter. We can reform them. We can, uh, we can, uh, we can, we can um, correct them now. What are we correcting there? The word of God is incorruptible. You see, many a times it is a war that is trying to deceive us to say that this doctrine is no longer valid. The Bible is as valid today as it was yesterday and to be as valid as it is tomorrow. All of us will go if Jesus Christ tarries and the Bible will still be constant. Praise the Lord. Look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. Revelation chapter 2, from verse 25 to 29. The, pre the prepare preparedness for the church's confirmed rapture. Revelation chapter 22 from verse 25. It says in verse 25, chapter 2, sorry, chapter 2 verse 25. Chapter 2 verse 25. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 2 verse 25. It says, but... That which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works, unto the end to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule over them with the rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received from my father. And I will give him the money star. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. Chapter 3, verse 11. Revelation 3. Verse 11, he said, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast with that heart that no man take that crown. I pray no man will take your crown. I pray no man will take the doctrine from you. I pray no woman will take the doctrine from you. I pray no woman will take your consecration. No man will take your covenant. Naira and Kobo, dollar, dollar and pounds will not take your consecration in Jesus' name. That is what it means to be prepared for the assured rapture. That you said nothing will take the word from me. Nothing will take my commitment and consecration. Point number three now, quickly. What must be, what must we be doing? We must reminisce and, con and we constantly recommit ourselves. Point number three, the reminiscence and constant commitment, recommitment. That is, you must be thinking, remember what the Lord says. Remember what the Lord said about his coming, his second coming. Because if you keep this in your mind and you are reminded constantly, then there is hope for you. Then you will not give in to the devil. You're not giving to the deception of the world. Look, look at Luke chapter 17 now. As we consider this third point, the reminiscence and constant recommitment. Our reminiscence and constant recommitment. Uh, Luke chapter 17. I want to read from verse 26. He says, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat and they drank. The married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now listen to me, brethren. It is not that it's bad to give in marriage and marry, but when you allow your marriage, when you allow the celebration of your child's marriage to trample the eternal truth on the faith, the things which you first believe. You trouble them on the faith. He said, Law, he said, he said, one, they, began, they became carried away with marriage and they forgot their commitment. They forgot his coming of the Lord. They forgot their consecration. They forgot holiness. Until the day of Noah and the Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of the Lord, they did, they did eat, they drank. Is it wrong to drink or drink? No, it's not wrong to drink or drink. They bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. They built it. You see, the problem was not in the building. The problem was how they got the money to build the building. At what cost they, build the, they did the building? Did they build the building at the cost of their commitment to the Lord? Did they get the money in the right way to build the building? Did they exalt building above the things of God? He said they drank, they ate. It is not what they, it is, it's not the drinking that is the problem, it's what they drank. 
They were drinking alcohol. They were drinking intoxicants. They were smoking things. They said, we are celebrating. We are rejoicing. But they were, were celebrating the, the, death of our, the death of our father, our mother. Somebody died in sin. You are celebrating the death of a sinner. He said, we are doing that. And they forgot the eternal truth. And the Bible says, look at what it says. Even, it said, likewise also, as it was in the day of Lord, they did eat and drank. They bought, they sold, that they did business. They traveled from nation to nation, doing business, making millions. They built it. But the same day that the Lord went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. What happened to the building? Destroyed. What happened to the empires? Destroyed. What happened to the marriages that they sold their eternity for? It came to an end, upright end. I'm not even sure whether for the people for whom they sold their eternity made it to heaven. And even themselves, they didn't make it. Their latter end was worse than their beginning. I pray that will not be our Lord. Look at what he then said. Look at what he then says. In that day, it's in verse 30, even though shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed, in that day he which shall be upon the house stuff and his stuff in his house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return. Verse 32, let's read together now. Remember who? Lord's wife. Lord's wife came out of Sodom, but he never got to the place he was supposed to get to. You are born again now. Make sure heaven is your destination. You will get there in Jesus' name. I will get there, and you will get there in Jesus' name. If we keep at the back of our mind that the Lord is coming, and he can come at any time, you guard yourself. And you prepared, you will make it in Jesus' name. Look at Luke, Acts chapter 20, verse 31. Verse 31 says, Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone, night and day, with tears. Watch and pray, because um, wounds will rise up from amongst you. Not only that, watch and pray, because you, the devil, might make you to become a false preacher. Watch and pray that you don't fall pray unto him. You will not fall in Jesus' name. I will not fall in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, let's look at First uh, Jude chapter 1. Jude chapter 1. I want us to read verse 17 to 21. Verse 17 of Jude. He says in verse 17, but beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last days. Last time, who should walk after their own ungodly laws? These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. Having not the spirit. What is the Lord telling us there? Be careful. There are people who are just led by the flesh and they say they are prophets that you don't fall prey. But, be ye, but ye, beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. I pray that you will make that eternal life. I pray that you will make it in Jesus' name. And we will make it together in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. Revelation 16, 15. He says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked, and they shall see his nakedness. You will not walk naked. And your nakedness will not be discovered in Jesus' name. You will not be stripped of righteousness. You will not be stripped of holiness. You will make it. I say you will make it. We will make it together in Jesus' name. We must constantly be thinking of the coming of the Lord. We must constantly recommit ourselves to the service of the Lord. We must constantly recommit ourselves to the way of righteousness and holiness. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received a heart and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. I pray that that will not be our Lord in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and pray and talk to the Lord. The Lord has spoken to us this evening regarding the second coming, our watchfulness, our readiness for the second coming. You know what? We are not only getting ready as believers, 
by living holy and righteous, we are preparing others to be ready for the coming of the Lord. We are encouraging them to live for the Lord. We are seeking out the sinners and preparing the church, preparing the world. I say, we all hear the voice of the Lord, hear the word of the Lord. The Lord is coming again. He's coming for the sake. A time of great tribulation is coming upon the earth. And when it comes, no, no status will not matter. Where you were born does not matter. What will matter at that time is your righteousness and relationship with Jesus Christ. That is a way to prepare and to prepare the world as we make ourselves ready by watching our friendship, by watching our language, by watching our character, by watching what goes on in our heart, by, watching, by being constant in fellowship, constant in prayer, constant in reading the word of the Lord. Let's pray and tell the Lord, Oh God, help me. That this word that I'm hearing today will not rise up in judgment against me on the last day in Jesus' name. Let's open our mouth. Let's cry unto the Lord. I say, Lord, we know sure, assuredly that you are coming again because you said it. The apostles said it. The prophets of old predicted it. And today we know and we are persuaded that you are going to come again. And if you are going to come again, you are coming for a church without spot, without wrinkle. Oh Lord, let the Holy Spirit search my heart. You apply the blood of Jesus to my heart, to my tongue, to my reign, and cleanse me and make me whiter than snow. Lord, you said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, you will not hear me. You will not be able to see me. Lord, this day, every iniquity in my heart, every imagination in my heart, every malice, every anger, every wrath, every deceit in my heart. Oh God, purge me and cleanse me this day. And the Lord will do it. I say the Lord will do it because he delights to do it. He has no pleasure in the death of the sinner. If you are not born again, here is an opportunity to come unto the Lord once again, to be reconciled unto the Lord. Or maybe you are backsliding. You have removed your sacrifice from the altar. You bound it here before. You took it out. Now the Lord is saying, this is a time for reconciliation. This is a time to come back unto him. To say, Lord, here I come. Here I come. I come with my sacrifice to the altar. I bind it there. I take it not away. For the rest of my life, I'm committed unto you. I will serve you. Paul the apostle said, the life which I now live, I live by the grace of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I forgot, I forget the things where I'm coming from. I forgot what I was in the world. I concentrate. I focus on Christ. Whatever Christ says I should do, whatever Christ says I should go, that's where what I will do. That's where I will go. And that should be our commitment. That should be our commitment. Recommit yourself to the Lord. Keep the word of God in your face and say, Lord, just like the disciples, the, 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 the Israelites were told. He said, These books of the Lord shall not depart out of their mouth. He said, Thou shalt write it and put it in the front of your house, in the doorpost of your house, in the windows of your house, and even on your phylactery, in the elm of your garment, so that any time you are going, looking at them, they remind you of the commandment. I think the same thing we ought to do. That constantly, he said, I will bind the word of God to my heart. I will bind the word of God to my spirit. I will not go back on the word of God. I will not go back on the commitment and the cons consecration I've made unto the Lord. If you do that today and you make up your mind to do that today and you ask for divine enablement and grace, I can tell you you'll be a different man. You'll be a different woman. You'll be a different minister, a different worker in the church in Jesus. Religion does not save. Religion will not make you ready. It is righteousness that will make you ready. Do you know that? Do you know that? Religion does not get anybody to heaven. It is righteousness that gets one to heaven. I am this, I'm that in the church. Does not get anybody to heaven. It is when we become born again. Our name is written in the book of life. Our living righteous before the law. That is when we can say definitely. When it comes as promised, I'm going to be with him. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, ye may be also. You will be there. I say you will be there. I will be there. We will be there together in Jesus' name. Let's pray and talk to the Lord. Speak to the Lord. Are you watching over the, your friends? The things you used to do, are you not doing, are you, are, that you forsook before, are you not going back to them? Now, Job said, I make a covenant with my eye. Why then should I behold a maid? You made a covenant in the year before, years we've gone by. Now, are you still keeping that covenant? Are you sure you are still keeping that covenant? Is there no girlfriend or boyfriend, woman friend somewhere now? Yet we say we are in church, we are believers, we are born again. 
The unrighteous shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Are you watching over your life? You see, every man shall give account of himself. That's what the Bible says. What account will I give? What account will you give? When the time comes, let's pray and talk to the Lord. Let's pray and talk to the Lord. I want to be able to give an account that I acquitted myself by the enablement of the Spirit. Let's pray. In Jesus' name, our Father, we just thank you for this time. We bless you for a word that we have had. We are praying and asking, Almighty God, that every sin we have had this day, your Spirit will help us, O oh Lord, to be challenged and to live by them and to make ourselves ready for the appearing of our Lord in Jesus' name. Every disruptor that wants to come into our life, let the Spirit of God remove them from our lives in Jesus' name. Cleanse and purge us. Make us ready. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen.